Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be a project video, and in this video, we're gonna build an iPad sleeve. The one that we're gonna make in the video is made for an iPad Pro. So this is a large iPad, the biggest one that they make, I believe. Um, you could easily change the design of this and narrow it up and make it for like an iPad mini or something like that. What we've done is we've done just a tooled plaque on the front just to add some personalization. That way you could do some floral tooling on it if you wanted to. I built this one for Claudia, and we built it out of some French cat that we bought in Waco last year and it made a really really nice functional uh, little pouch here for the iPad for hers and mainly my idea was mine uh, this is my iPad here and it just rolls around in my backpack so a lot of times the screen I've got one of those screen protectors because I draw all my patterns on there and um, it gets scratched up and stuff in the bag so I wanted to f build something to try to fix that so it didn't get scratched up so I made this one first and made a few adjustments and then we made one for Claudia as well and hers does her iPad does have a case on it um, one of these expandable cases and it still fits in there really nicely it's got a lot of room in there for you know a file folder anything extra you might want to carry uh, for business or for personal use whatever you need to do we also did an outside pocket on here where you could just kind of stash mail or some little loose leaf paper or whatever very simple project goes together really easily so let's hop right into the video and I'm going to show you how to make this all right, so we'll roll that French calf out. This is a turquoise colored French calf. I got it from Seeloy Leather there, there in El Paso. And uh, really nice stuff to work with here. There's two pieces that you'll need out of the chap leather, the main body piece and then the outside pocket. Um, if you wanted to add a second pocket on the other side, you certainly could just cut two of those out. But as you can see here, I am marking a little tick there uh, on that outside pocket there at the top. That's gonna be a fold over edge. We're gonna do a fold uh, there and, and roll and stitch that top edge of that pocket. Just makes it a little cleaner. And then you'll also see me mark uh, with an awl where the plaque is gonna go on that front uh, pocket there. And on the pattern, I have it marked off so that you can easily mark where that plaque's gonna go and you don't have to try to center it up. And so right here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the pattern for cutting out the, the little tooled plaque. And I'm going to go ahead and line that up and trace around there. I'm using a silver pin. I'll show later in the video, I'll show a close up of that pin. Aaron at Maker's Leather Supply does sell those pins. Anytime you're working on a finished full grain chap leather, those pins are great for marking your pattern on there and they'll wipe right off when you're done so it doesn't leave any residue. So now I'm just going to take some leather shears and cut these out. This is probably the most efficient way to cut when you're anytime you're cutting any kind of chap leather or calf skin or anything like that. It's just use a pair of nice sharp shears and uh, just cut right on your line and get them all cut out. And so here I've just got a piece of five, six ounce uh, Herman Oak skirting leather or veg tan leather. And I'm just gonna cut that plaque out. Um, I wouldn't go much over five, six. You could go nine, 10, but it, there's no need to. I would say fairly light on that. Now, since we are tooling this, you could definitely use blue painter's tape, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use poster board um, on this one just to be sure that it doesn't stretch at all. It's not that critical, but we just wanna kind of prep that up so that when we tool it, it doesn't stretch out of shape. So now here, we'll just take contact cement, glue that to that piece of leather, and uh, it'll be ready for tooling. So we'll begin here and we'll start doing the uh, layout of a little tooling pattern and I'll show a little bit of the tooling. Um, again, we have video series and things on our YouTube channel that go more in depth on the floral tooling, but we'll show just a little bit of it here to get this piece ready to put this bag together.
right, now that we've got the tooling done, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take a half round punch. That's a number nine hole punch that I ground off half of it to make that little U-shaped cutter. And so we'll go ahead and punch uh, on each end of where that zipper is going to go. And then we'll take a razor blade and we'll cut that whole slot out. Just be real careful if you want to use a straight edge as a, as a guide to kind of cut up against. You certainly can. But we'll just cut that slot out and that's where the zipper will go. Okay, so now on our front pocket piece, first thing we're gonna do, we see those marks there that we made when we traced off the pattern. I wanna have a nice line there so that we, when we fold that, we can fold on that line and make sure that that top edge is straight. So what we'll do is take our silver pin and just make a nice line there that we can actually see. And there's a good shot of that pin there. You can get those at Maker's Leather Supply and I'm sure other suppliers as well. Um, and that will wipe right off when you're done with the project. That silver doesn't stay on the material. Um, and so now I'll take a nice sharp razor blade in our safety skiver and we'll just begin to pull that down. If you have a bell skiver, this is a great uh, job for that tool or that piece of machinery to just take that off so that it has a nice long taper there where when we fold that, it's nice and clean and flat. And so there I'm just measuring, it's about a 3 8 inch, inch fold over. So that means I'll need to put glue about um, three quarters of an inch in. And so I'm just gonna mark that with the calipers and that way I know where to skive and also where to glue. Okay, now here's a little trick. Um, anytime you're doing any kind of skiving on chap leather and stuff, is you can take a lighter and just lightly singe the edge where you've been skiving, and it'll burn down any of those little fuzzies. I call them little fuzzies, little stra uh, stragglers that are hanging out there that you couldn't get with your blade. Um, if you take your time, you can get those off, but it also makes a really nice, clean, um, almost like a little finished edge right along there. And uh, so a lighter works great right there. All right, so now we'll just put glue along our edge, just staying inside of that three quarter inch line that we made. And then we'll fold to that line and check as well our silver line that we made to make sure that we're just making that fold over nice and even. So we'll put this glue on and let it get tacky and then we'll do our fold over. So now we'll begin doing this edge. As you do this, anytime you do a rolled edge like this, always have a couple lineup marks so you can keep it straight like we talked about. But also as you're going along, just kind of thumb it down as you walk along that edge. Don't try to just glue it all down permanently um, unless you know that it's just a straight line. But if in particular, if you were doing one that was curved, you'd want to just kind of thumb it down every so often as you go to make sure that you're making the proper uh, transition there on that fold and then just tap that down really nicely with a with a, uh, a flat faced hammer of some sort and uh, that'll get a good adhesion there for sewing. So that looks nice and straight and so now I'll just take our uh, wing dividers here and we'll just make us a stitch line that we can follow on our sewing machine when we sew that top edge down. Now I'm going to sew this top edge here on our little Singer 3115. If you're using a heavier chap leather, a uh, little bit heavier weight, you can certainly sew that on a Cobra Class 4 or 26. But with this lightweight leather, I decided to go ahead and just use the uh, the little machine and it'll, it'll make a real nice clean stitch here.
All right, so we've gotten that sewn. Now we'll come back over here to our zipper situation. This is zipper tape. It just comes on a roll. You can buy as many feet as you need. Um, I'm using black on this one. Um, it comes in black and brown, usually maybe some other colors. And then we'll go ahead and mark off. I want to have it longer than that slot because the tails of that zipper need to just fold down out of the way when you fold this in half to, to uh, sew the bag up. And so what we'll do is just leave the zipper together and then stretch it across there and make you a cut on each side of the zipper. And then you can open the zipper up and cut through in between a couple teeth there to get it cut free from the roll. And then I like to burn the edge of that down just a little bit. It's just nylon, that way it doesn't come unraveled on you. And then when you're going to put the slide in on these, be sure that the teeth are facing the right way. If you look really closely, those teeth have a little bump on one side of them. Just make sure they're facing the right way, um, facing the same way. And then when you go to put the slide on, it'll slide on fairly easily. And so what I like to do is just take and uh, put them together where they're about even. And I'm um, checking the teeth there and just making sure that we've got them where we need them. They should point away from the slide and then just line them up and then if you just give it a little push it'll push right down on there and then you've got it ready to go now we've got to put the stops in so that the zipper slide doesn't slide off of the the zipper chain obviously and so what we're going to do first is put the uh, i don't know if it's the top or the bottom stops either way we'll put the little ones on we're going to cut away a couple teeth and if you use a pair of side cutters like this um, or even a little pair of hoof nippers um, you can cut those right off of there and give us a little bit of space And so here, these are the two separated. There's one that's together. This, these are two separate individual stops. So you'll put one on one side and then crimp it down. That's all you do. You just crimp it down onto that, that little area and that'll hold it in place. You don't keep dropping them. They're kind of frustrating because they're so tiny, but I find that side cutters work best for this um, just because you can kind of get a nice good crimp on them and just crimp them down. And that's just going to ensure that that slide does not uh, fall off the end of the zipper if it was to go too far past where you need it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the bottom stop here. Um, or top stop, whichever one is called. And so as you can see, that's just like a little little brass fitting there and the way this works is you'll just kind of push it on the end over both sides of the zipper teeth um, and then we'll take a small hammer and just drive that through that nylon and I like to do this into a little piece of scrap leather or, or a wooden bench something like that and it's got little teeth that'll stick straight out on the top or on the bottom side and so you just want to take some needle nose pliers or, or another pair of pliers or something and just crimp those over so they lay nice and flat. It's just gonna keep that zipper again on that end from coming apart and separating, um, which will be, which would be bad if the zipper pull went further than you needed it to, but that's setting those. So real simple, now that zipper is made to the size we need it. Um, it's completely fastened together. It's not gonna come apart. The slide's not gonna fall off and it's ready to install into the bag. Now here I'm going to use double-sided tape. This is my preferred when it comes to zippers. Um, I used to use glue only and then I found this tape um, and it's it's very very useful and I keep plenty of it in the shop but putting in zippers it makes it a lot easier but you just put that on and then we'll put the zipper installed in that slot that we made on the main body of the bag. Now, as you're installing this zipper, do your best to kind of line it up on that slot to where you're not making that long slot wider or way narrower than it originally was before you cut the material away. So you just got to kind of eyeball it. And unfortunately, you kind of kind of fight that zipper trying to stick everywhere else while you're trying to line it up. But if just take your time, get it lined up right. Try, Like I said, main thing is try not to stretch since that slot is so long and that leather is so soft. Try not to stretch it out too much in the middle or you might get a little, little wonky kind of looking zipper in there where it's not very straight. So just try to keep that straight running down, same spacing on each side of those zipper teeth all the way to the other end.
Now again, I'm gonna sew this on my 3115. Usually when I'm sewing zippers in, I almost always will use this machine. It's got that little roller foot on there, which makes it a little easier. It's not mandatory, but it does make it easier to stitch nice and close to the edge of that leather. Um, but we'll just get this sewn in and we'll be ready to begin assembling this. And so here's our tooled piece. Uh, in the meantime, off camera, I went ahead and did a light oil antique on this piece here. You wanna do all your finish work. If you're gonna paint or dye or do anything like that, you wanna go ahead and do that before, this, uh, before we sew it on, obviously. And so now I'm just gonna edge it, slick it, and um, I didn't even do dyed edges on this one in particular, but you definitely wanna do all that first. But we'll go ahead and do that and groove it and get it ready to glue on the pocket and sew. Now I've given these edges a little time to dry so that the tool doesn't mess up our edge. Um, and so we'll go ahead, I'm just using a Tandy groover. And so we're gonna go ahead and go around there and just groove us a line for stitching. As I always say, you don't have to groove it, but I think it looks a little more professional if you do. So we'll just go ahead and groove our stitch line here. And now our pocket, you can see we did trace around the pattern when we when we cut that pocket out so we know exactly where that plaque's gonna go. I'm gonna put it on there and just make sure that we didn't stretch. We shouldn't have stretched at all with that poster board glued to the back, but I'm just gonna check to make sure that everything looks the way it should. And then we'll put glue on both of those and glue it in place. One light coat of contact cement was more than I needed to get these two pieces to stick together so you don't have to get too crazy. So now that we've got that glued on, we just bring it over here to the Cobra Class 4 and sew this up. This is probably overkill for this machine um, or for this little project here, but um, I like the larger stitch on, on this type of project. And so you could certainly sew this on a 26 with 136 thread, or you could even sew it on the uh, 3115. It would have handled it just fine. But I went ahead and just used my 207 thread in our, our what we call our big machine or our Cobra Class 4 to sew this up. All right, so front pocket is done. You can see it completed there and we'll go ahead and get our body. Now you can pick and decide which side you want the zipper to open versus closing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just kind of did it where the zipper's closed to the right as, uh, as it lays on the table face up. And uh, so we'll just line that pocket up, get it square on one side of the body, and then we'll take that pin again and I'm gonna make some marks on the pattern or on the body here where that needs to go. And then we'll glue around the edge and glue this up and then we'll be ready to fold it in half.
and our glues had a chance to dry. Line up, start at the top and line up on your marks and then get that because you know that's going to be square and then you can kind of work your way and just let it lay down. Um, try not to pull or push it too much and get it where it lays down nice and flat and we'll tap that around there and then we'll do the same to the body and fold this thing completely in half. Now I'm going to glue around. I'm going to put glue all the way around the edge, all of the edge, even up underneath that zipper. Don't glue the zipper down where it lies now, obviously, because it's hanging out of the bag, right? So just glue up underneath there, and then when we fold it, I'll show you what we're going to do with the zipper. So our glue is tacky. So what you want to do is tease those zipper tails up like that because we want them out of the way and pointing down into the interior of the bag when we fold this in half. So on this, we're going to start at the at the edge or the bottom edge there and we're going to line up those corners. I got a little glue stuck on there. Um, and we'll go ahead and line up those corners and work up from the bottom up to the zipper. And, uh, and like I said, as you're going up, you just want to be sure that those zipper tails are inside the bag not in between and that way when we sew we're not sewing down the zipper it's not getting in the way or a um, chance of breaking needles so you'll push those in and then pinch the corners of that bag as everything comes together and glues down Okay, so that's all glued together. That's ready to sew. One thing I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna kind of get in there and make sure that those zipper tails are out of the way. They're pointed down inside the bag, just kind of hanging there. They don't need to be attached to anything or anything like that. They just need to be out of the way for our sewing machine. And then I'm gonna grab a pair of shears and I'm just gonna trim up that edge, mainly focusing on the front of the bag from where we're gonna be looking. Um, I don't want any overhang from the front of the bag over the backside because I don't want to miss something when I'm sewing it so too close to the edge and not catch the back of the bag. So we're just going to trim off any excess. Um, we're hand cutting this stuff so it's not going to be flush perfect like a die cut. So we just want to kind of trim that up so we got a nice clean edge. So now here I'm going to take our wing dividers again and we're just going to set us a a distance there and we're going to kind of scribe us a stitch line that we can follow when we're uh, sewing at the machine. You could use a guide if your machine has a guide you could definitely use that. Um, I don't use a guide for uh, too many things. I do use one occasionally but I prefer to have a line to follow. That's just kind of how I sew but if you have a guide on your machine you could definitely just set that guide and use that. Now here, I don't, norm, I, do, I don't do this normally, I'm doing it to show you, but I'm making a mark there that kind of angles in towards the zipper at the top. That last stitch you make, you want to turn in like that because we're going to clip those corners off as you'll see in a minute. So we'll go ahead and sew that all the way around. Remember those top last stitches are first and last stitch. When you get to the top of that zipper, you're going to kick those into the inside just a little bit, just that last stitch or so, and that way it kind of points in at the top and uh, but we'll just sew around here being sure that everything is uh, not mushing around or nothing's coming you know trying to slide around on you or anything
Okay, so here we're just gonna cut our stitches. Um, you could definitely leave them a little long and burn them down if you want to. Usually if they're back stitched right and uh, they feel secure, I just cut them flush with the top of the material. If I, they feel a little loose or if I had to overstitch, I ran out of bobbin right there and had to start again, I'll go ahead and burn those down and that way they don't come undone. So now I'll take my shears and here's what I was talking about. As you can see that last stitch, I just kind of kicked it to the inside and that allowed for relief of material there on that corner because I just didn't like those corners. I thought they looked kind of unsightly. So we're just going to clip that edge right there. We're just going to clip it off. And then I'm going to carry it to the sanding machine. I didn't get that on video, but I'm going to sand those edges and make sure they're nice and clean. And then we'll edge and slick that. Um, up. As you can see there, I've, I've already gone to the sander and we just sanded all that to make it nice. I'm going to take a number two common edger. This is a Berry King. Um, what I call a common edger. Um, this one works really good for this soft type of material, chap leather type thing. It edges really, really well. Um, my round edgers, sometimes they don't do as nice of a job, probably because I need to spend some time really sharpening them, but this little edger here does a good job. So we're just gonna edge that real lightly just to knock that corner off, and then we'll get to slicking those edges. Now for these edges on this project or any chap leather project, I've recently played with some of the Tokenol, um edge dressing and it really works good. I'm real happy with it. It's, uh, it's a little thicker um, than some other stuff that I've used, but on this particular project, it did work really well. I think a Martin's mix would work well too. Um, even uh, the, the glycerin of water probably would work, but I'm just kind of experimenting and playing around with some stuff. And since this was a French calf, I went to go ahead and give it a shot and see what I thought about that uh, type of edge, dress, edge dressing. And um, I really liked it. It's got some good application. And here's our finished um, iPad sleeve here. And this is, like I said, Claudia's iPad. That's a uh, iPad Pro. It's the large one. And that ended up sliding in really nice. The one, the first one I made, I made just a hair narrow. And uh, for the zipper, it was just a hair narrow. And it ended up needing to be a little bit wider. So I went ahead and took care of that on hers. But as you can see, lots of room. Zips up nice. Just a good little protection and, and accent for the iPad. All right guys, so that's making an iPad sleeve. Like I said, it's a very simple project to build. This would be a great starter project if you've never made any type of bag situation. The zipper, the way I did the zipper in here is fairly easy and straightforward. We did use the zipper tape in this video versus buying a pre-made zipper the right length. Um, I wanted to do that because I haven't actually addressed that as far as using zipper tape before and using the top and bottom stops as well as putting your slide on and cutting it to length. So um, be sure and watch that. Again, It's zippers are are fairly easy but they're just kind of tricky to figure out right at first um, but zipper tapes a lot more functional a lot more uh, you know you can get a lot more out of it because you can make them whatever size you need them you don't have to necessarily have that exact size zipper for uh, any project you might design so that was fun but like I said goes together fairly easy um, the one I made the first one I made I made for myself I used oil tan chap leather this is uh, something that I would use to make a pair of leggings or a pair of chaps um, and it works really Really, really well it's a little heavier weight than the one I made for Claudia this one here is made out of French calf um, and it's just a beautiful beautiful leather worked really really nice it's got a lighter feel to it it's not as bulky or stiff and so but any kind of chap leather you want to use if you've got a good uh, source or find a good deal on some um, some type of chap leather and you want to use that that's perfect for that if you want to make one out of veg tan leather and tool the entire thing I probably wouldn't go above about four, maybe five ounce leather because it's going to get pretty heavy and um, that thing needs to, I think it needs to be a little softer and stuff, but I definitely wouldn't line it or anything like that. Um, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to, it'd be a lot of tooling. Remember, this is made for the iPad Pro, which is a which is their largest iPad. I, I don't know if there's, this is an older one, so I'm not sure on size, this has a lot of relief in it. So even the newer ones, if they are a little bit bigger, it should still fit, but just be sure to check your measurements. If you wanna adjust this pattern to fit on a mini iPad or a smaller one, you could certainly 
certainly very easily just kind of narrow everything up. The plaque will stay the same, um, and so you could certainly do that, just sew it on whatever size you decide to make the final sleeve. As with all of our project videos, we do offer a pattern pack for this, so if you'd like to get a hold of that, we offer a printed version and a digital version. So if you're outside of the United States, since we don't ship outside of the U.S., um, then, then we do have, offer the digital version there. You can pick that up. You will have to take that to a print shop and have it printed uh, since it is a large format print. The paper that this prints out on is 22 by 28 inches uh, in dimension, so you're going to take that somewhere and have it printed. But if you're in the U.S., we have them printed. We will mail these out to you. Um, you can certainly purchase one of those at our website at dgsaddlery.com, and I'll put links to both of those products down in the description, so you can certainly just hop down there and go and get that. The pattern comes with six different tooling patterns as well as all of the cut patterns and everything else on here and a few little project notes and things like that. So if you want that, you can certainly grab that. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter, and we'll see you on the next project video.